أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته We give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this way of life, for this wonderful opportunity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the ibadah we just concluded. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all our shortcomings as well. Today is one of the wonderful day in this blessed mosque that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opportune or has given us a chance to gather here for the purpose of what? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to giving our brother, our doctor, Dr. Umar Sallaw, Having the, within his tight schedule, given us the chance to come and talk to us in our health. And Dr. Umar Salo, his origin, I must say, is a Nigerian, but he was born in Ghana. He grew up in Ghana and studied in Ghana. Then he proceeded in, to stay in USA. He stayed a very long time in USA while studying at the same time. At the same time, uh, he went ahead and studied from different countries, including India, Medina, and all others will hear from him while he's giving us a lecture. But just, just a brief introduction I'm giving about him. He's a diabetologist. We know one of the serious sickness in Nigeria now is with, about, about diabetes. And he's an expert in that field. And Alhamdulillah, we have him in our midst that will tell us more on how to prevent and what are the causes what kind of food that what we should be taking at the same time. And at the same time, lastly, what is part of his expertise is what? He's an he's expert in nutrition. So this is the best time that what we learn about our Islamic way of what? Even our meat that we're taking, the food we're eating. Are they consumable? Are they good enough for our body or not? In medical perspective and at the same time, how Quran Talk about all this, and inshallah, we'll hear from a doctor. And we really appreciate the time, doctor, coming to being in part of the this our uh, small community. But what in our heart is a big community. We really appreciate, uh, doctor. And here is the mic for you to for us to hear from you from your vast knowledge of Islam. Thank yes, you. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على رسول الله وعلى آله لا تحر وصحبة الأبرار وسبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمر وأهل لقدة من لسان يفقه قولي أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد صرفنا في هذا القرآن للناس من كل مثل وكان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا ثم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته We thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for this day and we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for everything My respected elders, brothers and sisters This very ayah that I quoted in Surah Kaf talks about the uniqueness of Al-Qur'an, whereby everything that you need to thrive, and if everything that you need to live a healthy life, a spiritual life, to be at your epic can be found in Al-Qur'an, either directly or indirectly. But there is nothing that has been left. The, the title that I gave to my sheikh is Quranic solution to high cholesterol. And we all know when you talk of high cholesterol, you're talking of stroke, you're talking of heart disease, and so many debilitating um, diseases. But the problem is um, my sheikh, from whom I learn, is now introducing me as someone with knowledge in Islam. That, and that's very, very difficult for me to sit in front of my sheikh and, you know, but let's see um, the little bit that we can share with uh, my esteemed elders and brothers. I have a sheikh in, in New York, Sheikh Idris Ibrahim. 
He said to deal with something, everything that you want to deal with, because then we used to have um, debate with Christians. He said the first thing you have to do is to define what you are about to talk. What are you going to talk about? You have to define it so that you and your listeners will be on the same page. When we talk of Al-Quran, we all know it is the unique book that Allah SWT has given us, the manual of the do's and don'ts. To live a healthy life, spiritually and physiologically. So that at the end of the day, we, we make good use of the time and return back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to be rewarded. The only reason why we're having problems as Muslims is we refuse. In some cases, we actually ignore the dictates of Al-Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gives you all these directions and you try to ignore it, you're going to pay a price. فَلِيَحْضَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ عَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُسِبَهُمْ فِتْنَا أَوْ سِبَهُمْ and so part of the problems that we're having when it comes to our physiological uh, problems is because we don't adhere to the dictates of Al-Quran. This book, the manual of do's and don'ts of our life, did mention about the heart. And from them we can comb foods that are healthy and keep the heart strong. Foods that can keep us away from diabetes. Foods that can keep us away from blood pressure, kidney problems, ulcer, everything. وَلَقَرْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرَانِ النَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ By كُلِّ مَثَلٍ that means كُلِّ مَثَلٍ, everything. But as the Prophet ﷺ eloquently put it, Alimahu man alima wa jailahu man jahila. It's just that if you know, you know. And if you don't know, you just don't know. It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. You know, cholesterol is a yellow, waxy substance that is in our blood. And it's so important. And this is where you see the paradox. Cholesterol is so important if you refuse to eat foods that will give you cholesterol, the liver will produce cholesterol because you can't live without cholesterol. It is an integral part of our cells. And as we all know, by the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates you from that male and female um, fluids together, it fuses into a cell. And from that cell, we have two cells. You have 4, 8, 16, 32, and it keeps on dividing. By the time you are an adult, you have approximately 100 trillion cells. And each and every cell needs cholesterol. In fact, as a man, if you have much more lower than normal, it weakens you as a man. You know what I'm talking about. And so you, because it actually affects testosterone. And when it affects that, it affects you as a man. But why are we always talking about cholesterol? And you even take, taking uh, medications to ensure that, you know, we get rid of them. The problem is, is when they are out of balance. And that is why for everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be in the middle. If you have high cholesterol, you have problem. If you have low cholesterol, you have problem. It's just like dopamine. If you have too much dopamine, you go crazy. If you have low dopamine, you see your hands shaking. That is what is happening to, you know, as you're growing older, some of us. You know, you see a person, you know, one thing, you have too much of it, it's a problem. You have too low, that is a problem. The same thing is applying to what? To cholesterol. And that is why even when it comes to spending, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Furqan, Quran chapter 25, He says, Bada wa ladhina iza anfaku lam yusrifu wa lam yukturu wa kena bayna dhalika qawama. Even when it comes to spending, we, want, we have to be in the middle. 
wa kadhalika ja'alnakum ummatan wasata for everything we have to moderate we have to be in the middle the same applies to cholesterol now when you have too much cholesterol because you have let me use the word pipe so that we can have an um, idea of what i'm talking about and if you have this you know blood vessels that blood is oozing through them the heart is pumping it out if you have too much cholesterol it actually blocks the way the blood flows through and as as it blocks it it forms a plaque if it forms a plaque and with time and if it ruptures then you have problem if it clacks you you are likely to have ischemic stroke if it ruptures you are likely to have hemorrhagic stroke whichever way it is it's not good for you and it actually also affects the heart but how could a person move to, from having a normal cholesterol to having a high cholesterol you know we have all these um, factors that interplay and we have uh, genetics that you have no control over and then you also have your lifestyle uh, that you have control over the types of food that we eat the time that we eat food and our mental state all contribute to cholesterol now where do we start let us start with something that we all have control over that's the food that we eat the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in hadith of uh, ibn majah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reported to have said ma mala adami min wi'an min sharr min batan bi hasbi ibn adam luqaymat yukmuna sulba fa in kana la budda fa'ila fa thulusun li ta'amihi wa thulusun li sharabihi wa thulusun li nafsihi the worst that a man can do is to actually feel his stomach and so you have to eat moderately even when it comes to food if there needs be then you have to divide your stomach into three one for food one for drinks and the third for respiration now if we eat more than we want we eat if you violate this common hadith or this simple hadith let me put it uh, appropriately if you violate this simple hadith which means we are now having more calories that we need and if you have more calories that you need the body is going to turn it into what into fat in a form of triglycerides that in addition of those foods that we eat um the type of transfer that we eat and the way we process our food also contribute to what cholesterol and so you have this combination then it becomes very dangerous to your health because at the end of the day if it affects the heart it affects everything i didn't say that the scientists are saying that if there is one organ that you need to protect to ensure that everything goes okay it must be the heart because it is the heart that pumps blood to each and every part of your body why did they say that they said according to latest research but this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said over 1400 years ago ala inna fil jasad mudgha اذا صلحت صلح الجسد كله واذا فسدت فسد الجسد كله على وهي القلب and so to have anything that will affect the heart and today we're talking about cholesterol which means you are taking foods that whether you know it or not is going to affect your heart and this is why we have to go back to alquran and the sunnah for solutions if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his messenger is advising us not to overeat then it's something that we have to take into consideration and sometimes we don't eat that much but we eat the right food but at the wrong time and with all this respect one thing i found here is that people eat meat very late and that is a recipe for cholesterol high cholesterol we eat meat Sometimes I go for exercise around 9 9:30. I see people buying meat. Okay, if you eat meat around 9 10 o'clock, so when are you going to sleep? Suya, right? And frying is suya, right? Frying. Suya. Suya. And this is suya. 
And so you eat suya to soya yourself. And that is a disaster. So it's something that we also um, we, we, we really have to take into consideration. If you look throughout Al-Quran, the people of Jannah, you see the foods that they eat are plant-based. They are mostly what? Fruits. And as Amira Ayyad said, the word fakia, under it you can derive also um, vegetables. And these are things that in our culture here, we don't, we don't eat vegetables as food. You know, sometimes uh, we just add them to, you know, foods or sometimes we completely ignore it. But it should be uh, a component, an integral part of our eating. And sometimes, subhanAllah, a Muslim will go the whole day without eating fruit. We should be eating fruit as food, only fruits. When you, uh, when you were in India, there are certain ways of, you know, detoxifying yourself and you have to stay on fruits the whole day. You tell someone here, you say that, why? You want to kill me or what? But you can, it's doable to stay on fruits for the whole day. Try it. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have done that, well, I didn't say it. Aisha radiallahu anha, she, she did and it's not like hadith that you said, well, well we're talking of Sahih, Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari. You know, those are unquestionable. Where Umm Aisha was reported to have said that sometimes the Prophet Sallallahu will go over two months without me. And this is one sunnah that we all beg not to even remember. Well, we eat too much meat. And that contributes to cholesterol. The Prophet Sallallahu is eating plant-based food morning, afternoon, evening, for one week, two weeks, a month, two months. That's a lot. Now, from the look of it, it looks like because it's not available. But can't we also see that it's part of the hikmah of Allah SWT to keep him healthy? And so it is one of the ways to actually lower your cholesterol. That is to concentrate more on vegetables and fruits. And from, um, let us also take from Surah Al-Baqarah, Quran chapter 2, verse 61. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى لَنْ نَصْبِرَ عَلَىٰ تُعَمٍ وَاحِدٍ Right? These are people that are actually playing uh, with Musa alayhi salam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them manna wa salwa. And so they pleaded. فَرِوا لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُحْرَجْنَا مِمَّا تُنْبُتِ الْأَرْضِ مِنْ بَقَلِيهَا وَكِثَّاهِيَا وَفُومِهَا وَعَدَسِهَا وَبَسَلِهَا Musa alayhi salam did not condemn those fools. But he was trying to actually draw the attention that you can't even remotely compare these are superfoods, but you can't remotely even compare them with what? With manna wa salah, because this is divinely prepared. Qala atasabdinu al-lazi huwa adna bil-lazi huwa khair. So the Musa alayhi did not actually condemn these fools. He was actually drawing them to what? To the higher one, which is far better because it's divinely prepared. Now we don't have manna wa salah, but at least we can actually come from these fools mentioned in Al-Quran chapters verse 61 we have garlic garlic contain allicin and it is known to have anti hyperlipidemic properties in other words it lowers fat in your blood you have others under it, you have legumes. They have niacin. Niacin is what? A form of vitamin B3. Part of its biological function is to actually uh, the metabolism of what? Lipids. These are fats in your blood. You have uh, 
you have garlic, you have lentils, you have cucumber. It's diuretic. And so it's extremely very good. That, you know, sometimes, even though we read it in Al Quran, but we highly, uh, we hardly use it. You have onion, which contains what? Quisitin. And that is extremely powerful to keep you healthy and to keep your heart very healthy. These foods that we read each and every day in Al Quran, in Surah Al Baqarah specifically, holds key to lowering what? High cholesterol. One British Journal of Nutrition brought these, you know, you know, by reporting these are foods that are actually good for high cholesterol. Little did they know that these are the same foods mentioned in Al-Quran. And we have it as Muslims. So why should we be having problems with high cholesterol? Which means we have it, but we're not using it. And that's our problem. And this is one of the things that we, uh, we have to go back to our roots. Come through Al-Quran, take all these foods, make good use of them, so that to keep the heart healthy. And when we do that, you know, we keep at bay heart disease, stroke, weakening our system as men, blood pressure, kidney problems, and the list goes on. And so these are things that, mashallah, you know, we just have to see which one to use when, and how to use our culinary art to know that, okay, at this time I'm going to use this, and at that time I'm going to use this. All these are right in front of us. And that is the uniqueness of our Quran. Until the day we die, until the day the last man leaves, nobody can actually claim that he has actually drawn everything from our Quran. Because with scientific development, we tend to actually see so many ayahs from actually different angles. And that's one of the uniqueness of our Quran. Then they will tell you that we found out this according to latest research. Then you find it is either mentioned in our Quran. Or mentioning in the hadith and so wallah we shouldn't be having problems and so by doing this we lower our cholesterol and when we lower our cholesterol which means we are on the path to what vibrant health and also certain foods that we eat sugar for instance because when you go down that path which means we are basically ignoring what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us as the best of the best and that is honey in Surah Al-Nahl, and as our sheikhs have taught us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired the Prophet to actually guide us to this healthy sweetener. Bada so this is something that we should be using honey and if you have to talk about honey and its health benefits that will require at least two three hours instead we deliberately chose to use sugar what does sugar do when we take sugar and all these artificial sweeteners in our drinks, what do they do? They shoot up insulin. And when you have high insulin, it also affects an enzyme that is called HMG-CoA. And when you have that, that also shoots up what? Cholesterol. And so from eating sugar, this is where you end up. You're taking sugar because Marshall mm, 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 is, is just sweet. But then the cascade of problems that follow is something that is unbearable. And as I told uh, a brother, I say, if you really, really, really love your wife, then you have to give up sugar. Said why? I said, because at the end of the day, forget about cholesterol. It thickens your blood. And if it thickens your blood as a man, it weakens you as a man. And so you have to give that up. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the best, and that is honey. 
And even though I've learned, and it's very unfortunate, that today we've become so materialistic, we've become so greedy, that some Muslims, Muslims, are mixing honey with sugar and other stuff and sell it to Muslims. And you see, when you do that, you are violating two things. You are belying Al-Quran. You are literally trying to belie Al-Quran. Because someone will then take honey and get sick and ask, what happened? Isn't it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi shifa'u nas? So you put in doubt in his heart. And you are also harming Muslims. Where are we taking all this money to? It is because of this materialistic ideology that has permeated and brought all this insecurity. Muslims are ready to kidnap Muslims just for money. Muslim what happened to us as Muslims? And it's part of this that because we actually ignore or we tend not to pay attention to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And so in a nutshell, this is the practical way to lower your cholesterol, keep your heart healthy, inshallah, keep heart disease at bay, stroke at bay, heart attack at bay, hypertension at bay. And with it also comes the little brother, and that is diabetes. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our first. I don't want to prolong it, so I'm going to stop here so that if you have questions, please feel free to ask. The little that we know, we share with you. That which we don't know, we just don't know. What is Akumullah khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. If I give lectures, I, I want to spend more time listening to my yeah, listeners. Because now I'm telling you from what I want to tell you. But if you ask me a question, that's what you want. Yes. So let us. So in fact, the lectures is now beginning through questions. Yes, inshallah. Now, let us have the first question. And if you don't have a question, I have a question. Now. Uh, in the beginning, you spoke about eating at the right time. Mm. Foremost, eat less. I hope you understand me. And when it comes to foods, foods that are easily digestible, these are fruits. And when it comes to fruits, you know, eating them, you know, after an hour or two to go and sleep is, is no big deal. And so if you have actually, um, you know, derived from Al-Quran, the wisdom of eating fruits, not only because they are healthy, because they are easily digestible, and, you know, put them at the end of the, um, the chain when it comes to food that we eat, we're good to go. But the problem is, you know, in... in we just turn it upside down. Mostly we eat the heaviest food at the end. And that shouldn't be the case. I hope you understand me. MashaAllah. Yes. What are the symptoms of high cholesterol? High cholesterol normally doesn't have, that's why um, they describe it as very dangerous. You normally don't have symptoms like when you have this. These are the symptoms. It's just not like um, you know, diabetes, they tell you that when you have polyuria, polydipsia. Oh, so these are the class. With high cholesterol, it's not that clear. Sometimes you just have to look at um, the way your heart beats, how you feel, how easily you get tired, whether you are weak as a man. These are the things you have to look. But at the same time, the same things, symptoms could also be attributed to other problems. I hope you understand me. So there are certain diseases you don't, or certain conditions, you don't have like specific symptoms. I hope you understand me. You just have to look. And sometimes you let your body talk to you, or sometimes you actually scan your body. Why is it that now I easily get tired? Why is it that I'm now weak as a man? 
why is it that this is that? And that is why it's okay if this is related to my heart. By the time I walk from here to here, I, I keep on panting. By the time I do this, okay, now then it has to do with my heart. If it has to do with my could it be cholesterol? Yeah, I hope you understand me. So these are the things that you have to look. You scan your body and just look. Or the easiest way to actually have a blood test. Yes, your lipid profile. So that you, you, you know, you know where you... Uh, uh, talking about uh, honey and sugar, mm. both you know appear sweet in the mouth, mm. just sweet. Yet one is healthier than the other. Mm. Honey is healthy mm. if one can take you know a reasonable quantity. Mm. When compared to sugar, mm. what is the mechanism that makes the honey healthier? Yes, both are sweet. No. So the, the chemistry that makes it. MashaAllah, uh, our esteemed father is asking, you know, well, honey is sweet, sugar is sweet. How come honey is healthier and sugar is not healthy? Sugar is a processed food. And processed food by nature is not healthy because it has been stripped of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in it to make it healthy. And mostly, subhanAllah, you see those junk processed food, they are just sweet. And you know, mashallah, it makes you feel good, makes you, mashallah. Honey, on the other hand, has so many things in it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put. You know, you have vitamins you have enzymes and it even has a trace of protein all these combine anytime you eat honey they actually help your body to actually absorb it slower than sugar and when it gets absorbed slower which means it's not going to irritate your um, kidneys and then your pancreas to force it to what? To release more um, insulin. And with it then comes all this cascade of problems. And that is why I'm saying that if you have to talk about honey, what it contains, the mechanism, the chemistry, that's going to take a long time. I was um, invited on TV to talk about health. And then we, I, we, I did mention about honey. They said, why don't you talk about it? I said, if you have to start, you know, we can't finish in an hour. They said, why don't we try? You know, when we went to break in, it has vitamin A, vitamin B1, B2, B3, B5. And what each vitamin, uh, vitamin does, the vitamin C, they have to invite me back. Because we have to break into each one and what it does. So in a nutshell, in a nutshell if you, the, the way you see honey, it's packed with nutrients. And that nutrients actually compensate for that sweetness. <laughs> And so when the body takes it, it takes it slower than sugar. So they have two different, um, you know, uh, ways that they, you know, impact the body. And that's why one is healthy, the other one is not. In a nutshell, now. Yeah. Now. Alex, Yeah, you did mention about sugar. I know it's very difficult to completely stop sugar. For some of us, I use it, <laughs> but I know, like what of brown sugar? If, is there is there any quantities in the brown sugar that also helps or totally sugar? And my second question is for those who like like sugar cane. I know sugar comes from sugar cane. And processed. Yeah. Okay. I think that question also answered it. But I want to be more specific because the quantity of sugar sugar cane people take also, I don't know. At the end of the day, maybe does it also affect the the body or not so maybe that's <clears throat> let's deal with the first question um you know it's very difficult to stop sugar no it's not yeah. it's easy <laughs> you know the last time I, you know uh, they took me to one place i can't remember the last time i was here in abuja i said if there is one tribe that should not have diabetes 
That must be the Hausa tribe. Why? The name of diabetes is enough as a warning. What do they call it? Chew or what? Chew and sugar. Then why will it take sugar when you know it's going to give you chew? <laughs> the reason why stopping um, sugar is easy is your reason. Anytime you take sugar, I give you 10 minutes, you forgot. Whether you're taking sugar or not. In the next 10 minutes, you forgot. In the next six hours, it will be disturbing your system. So you look, does it worth it? 10 minutes tantalizing my uh, taste buds. And six hours detrimental to my health. Does it really worth it? When you reason, it's easy to stop. The Prophet was reported to have said, your body has right over you. Part of that right is to feed it right. And so you don't tantalize, you don't tantalize your taste buds for 10 minutes. And then you spend the night talking about football with your wife because you're weak and you, don't, you, you just don't want her to know. That is very unfortunate. And then comes, we just mentioned about cholesterol. Hypertension. Heart disease. Kidney disease. Liver problems. Cancer. I don't want to mention about diabetes. I'm pretending I've forgotten about it. Because at the end of the day, the name you call it says it all. So I, I'm not mentioning diabetes. Because if the cancerous cells, if there is one thing that actually helps them to actually keep on replicating, it's sugar. So why will I have to take these? Just because I want to sweet in my mouth for 10 minutes. Sometimes the problem is people say, but my doctor say, I need sugar. The question is, which type of sugar? If you take banana, banana is sweet. Right or wrong? Mango is sweet. Pineapple is sweet. You didn't put that sweetness there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. And that is the type of sugar that we need. The natural sugars. I hope you understand me. And so Allah, it doesn't worth it. My, my daughter at the age of 15 has never seen sugar before. If she did, that must be outside, not in my home. 15 years. Not one single day did I buy sugar for 15 years. And in fact, that has been the tradition of our home before she was even born. And yet we are alive. I think I'm alive, right? I'm here. <laughs> so what type of sugar do you need? Sugar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in foods. And out of the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by putting that, that will encourage us to what, eat more fruits. So that you have the replication of the people of Jannah. It's just unfortunate we found substitute, but that substitute happened to be what? Unhealthy. Brown sugar ain't any different. I hope you understand me. It's the molasses. The molasses being introduced during the process at the end. That makes it look brown. And so it gives you that, um, you know, that idea that, oh, I don't, I don't take sugar. I only take brown sugar. Oh, my God. I, I remember the article that I read, um, the difference between brown and white sugar. New York Times. They brought all this scientific evidence. No difference, my brother. No difference. Oh, there is difference. This is brown. <laughs> and this is, this is not... Now, any, you know, the second part of your question, right? Sugar cane. Sugar cane is good. I hope you understand me. 
I don't know um, here, but in America, they, they make sugars without sugar canes. Could you believe that? Yes. But sugar cane, in its, you know, you take sugar cane is good. But I'm saying that the process that it goes through and the chemicals added and the heat and the superheat and end up having all this, you know, nice, you know, granules, that is a problem. But if you also take sugar, uh, sugar cane, it doesn't mean that you should overeat. Because then that violates the rule that the Prophet Sallallahu gave us in the hadith of Imam Ibn Majah. That divide your sumac into three. I hope you understand me. So it's sugar cane is good, but then, uh, you know, you should be moderate. Now. Nah. Now, nah, Sheikh. Uh, you talk mm -hmm. about processed food. Yes. If I may come down to the level of how we live in Nigeria, one of our best and most common food is rice. Mm. The majority of what we are eating is what? It's a processed rice. We call it pavoy mm. rice. It's very, very common. Does that has any harm to us or not? At the same time, we don't eat it like that. We always put meat on top of it. Mm -hmm. it's all Always. <laughs> Mashallah. Um, if my brother should shift, because maybe. No, it's okay, it's okay, just sit down. Yeah. Because maybe what I'm going to say, if in case they attack me, I can just <laughs> run out. You know, if you take rice. You take rice in its natural form. You want, and subhanAllah, mostly we don't want those rice. We say they're not sweet. We want, right? Like if you have brown rice. Mostly people don't like it. They say it's not sweet. You know why? Because it contains fiber. And fiber by nature is tasteless. And so the grains that you're eating has fiber in it. And so you don't actually feel it. But when they take the fiber out, which is actually, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his infinite mercy and hikmah, has actually wrapped grains with fiber, with husk. Why? Because then that helps your body to take it in slowly. So that it, you know, it gets digested slowly so that it, there's no uh, blood sugar spike there's no insulin spike there is no cholesterol spike then there is no problem spike but because we want it sweet we get rid of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in it uh, isn't it the, the same thing that we read the last time in Surah Al-Rahman by the Uzbilam Shaitan Rajim that al-habbuzul-asf. The problem is that we always get rid of al-asf. So now we have al-hab in its process form. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to actually cover it. That al-asf in it, you have thiamine. The form of vitamin B1. That actually helps the body to take it in slowly. So that it won't affect your kidneys, it's not going to affect your pancreas, it's not going to affect your heart. And so we have to go back to our roots. We're not doing something new, no, we're just going back to our roots. And so yes, we've been eating this for long, but the good thing about Islam is you always can come back. You can bounce back. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on telling us in Allah ghafoor rahim even though we've violated so that we can come back the same thing even on nutritional level if you come through the prophetic medicine you know that there are certain things that we violate that we can still what make it up and so it's time for us to change the way we eat it's not Quran it's not hadith and so don't say no no that's the way they that's no that's the way we know it so you get my point. If it's, if it's Al-Quran or Hadith, he said, no, 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 I can't change it or I can't adjust it. That is the way it is. With eating, if you find out something is not right, 
I mean, you can change it at, and what? For the betterment of at least the next generation. You are not only going to benefit, the next generation will actually see that, okay, this is how it's being prepared now. So they, they go with it. And so you see cultures with time, you know, the, you know, the foods, the way they prepare foods keeps on changing. Is it that some people are just um, conservative that once they hold to something, they just don't want to leave it, even if they know that um, it's not good. And so this is, the, now that we know that, okay, why don't we take it rice in its um, natural form, which is actually consistent with Surah Rahman. And not only that, it's actually good for our health. And so I think it's not too late. Inshallah. What? Is it Inshallah or like Inshallah? Because now one Sheikh said that Muslims have created another Inshallah. We have the real Inshallah and we have the excusable Inshallah. The person knows he's not going to do it, but he said, Inshallah. <laughs> that is the other Inshallah, the excusable Inshallah. So I don't know which one you say Inshallah, which one? The real one, mashallah, jazakallah. I know it's the real one. I trust him. Nah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. I don't understand what you mean about that. The moon not removing the rice again. As we should not remove the husk. We should eat it like that. No, no. After the husk. You know, there is coding. The reason why we have rice, you know, certain rice, it takes time to prepare them. Even when it comes to cooking. Others are quick to be cooked. I'm talking of the coating, the coating around the grain. I hope you understand me. No, you don't polish, no. You know, rice will be in its what? In its shell. Now ask, you when you take that, it has a coating. It still has coating. Yes. That is supposed to cook. That is what we polish. And get rid of what? The thiamine, the um, the fiber, the nutrients, we get rid of them. In, in fact, in some cases, we, you know, we, we go through that, we give that to animals. Yes, we, the, you know, the healthy part, we give it to animals, and we take the junk. MashaAllah. These are the things that I'm talking about. Now. Wa alaykum Going back to sugar. Yes. Take a lot of sugar and give the excuse that during their monthly this thing that mm. they do get rid of it. I want to know <clears throat> if it is actually true. You know, when women go through that, they have they have a lot, <laughs> and that's why I always plead with my brothers that any time a woman is in that stage, what we call the red zone, you should be uh, be patient. You know, we have. Estrogen and progesterone. These are two hormones that play with the woman's even the, her approach. You know, whether she's, she's cool or she's being erratic, whether she, you know, she's hyper or not, it is during those times. So they can give you excuse to do anything. All what you have to tell them, don't argue with them. Just tell them that, why don't you then follow the rules of um, Surat al-Nahal? Instead of taking all this you know, to increase your risk of diabetes, and hypertension, and actually with time, even it's going to affect your children. Studies have shown that a woman, if a woman will have blood sugar level to certain level, it's going to affect her children. And if she, if she doesn't breastfeed them for two years, as prescribed in Al Quran, it actually be shoots, um, you know, their risk of having what? Diabetes and blood pressure later in their lives. I hope you understand me. And so don't argue with them, just tell them that, okay, in that case, why don't you take the healthier one? You know, come, you know, just, this is Surat, um, surat Nahal, it has given you honey, go for that. So that you live in peace. <laughs> yes. Naam. Mashallah, I think. Uh, you said us to understand that eating meat basically is so. You see, eating meat generally, what's what like red meat or chicken? Chicken. Fish. Any meat. Any meat. 
and don't eat meat every day. <laughs> this is not from me, this is from Aisha Radilana, so please don't blame me. Aisha, Aisha Radilana, she said that, not me. I hope you understand me. Yes. And wallahi, try it and see. Try it. Go, go one month without meat. Oh, okay, sorry. Let's, let's strike a balance, two weeks. I, I, I don't want to be said, you know what? Don't bring this brother here again. Allah, if you just um, try that sunnah of not eating meat for, for a while and see how you feel. <laughs> you, take, you can take beans, you can take quinoa, you can take lentils. This is mentioned in Surah uh, Bakar, right? So you can take those. You have your protein uh, there, you know, mashallah. You, you have vegetables. You take, look, you take the crisporous vegetables. Something like broccoli, cabbage, bok choy, Brazil sprouts. Cook them as food. Just eat vegetables. Huh? Feel the with Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean. You know. Sometimes, if if you are used to heavy foods and you eat this food, you, you feel that they don't hold your stomach. But trust me, with training, with time, they can. I know a brother that if you if you will have to add all the foods that he eat the whole day, what well, lies the same food that he used to eat in one sitting. But with time, you know, when you expand your stomach, it needs more. When you start eating, you know, wisely, you, you know, what you are actually doing is, you know, coming back to what the Prophet said that divide the stomach into three. Because if you eat more, if you have more calories than you need, the body will turn it into fat. It will turn it into a form of triglycerides. And you don't want it. You don't want that. I hope you understand me. And meat is... It's not easily you know, digestible. Meat, it takes time. And if there, is one, if there is one organ that will beg you not to eat a lot of meat, that will be kidneys. Your kidneys, does, you know, your kidneys don't like too much meat. It gives it problem. And so please, you know, we, we, can, we can't just, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to go to the extreme. But trust me, sometimes in America we stay six months without meat. The brother, the brother is not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Oh, in fact, in fact, someone told me a name in, in the house. My house is not good. Someone told me that, that there's a name for, you know, if you want to buy your wife uh, meat, you, you buy her suya, it has a name. You bring it to her in the night. That's double seller. <laughs> yes, uh, it has a name. I don't know, but. Uh, <laughs> 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 What's your name? Huh? Ashraf? 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 Abdullah Ashraf? Masha Allah. May Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you more sharf. Masha Allah. Masha Allah. Okay, let's take uh, the last question. Uh, uh, Okay, okay, let's quickly wrap it up now. I've seen it, there's, there's a sign now. Can we say uh, fasting will actually help the system, even if you take maybe uh, take sugar, fat, meat? If you are fasting, will it help to reduce all those kind of things? Okay. 
sugar. We heard what the brother said. If you take sugar and you take all these bad foods, but then you take, um, you fast. Can it help? Yes, it can. But then let's look at it at a, um, from the other, other angle. This is harmful. And this is very beneficial. So you're taking that which is harmful, knowing that you're going to take something that is beneficial to cover it, so that you cancel it out, right? Why don't you then take something that is beneficial and then have the fasting so that you have benefit, benefit? What about that? Yes, yeah, that makes more sense. And you know, um, the body is said that on the day of Qiyam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask us how we, you know, how we treated the body. Because it's amana. <laughs> At the end of the day, we have to understand. All these foods that the Prophet is eat, don't eat too much, do this, and don't do it. Remember, the body is amana. And that's why even Quran went to the length of telling us how to handle emotions. Bada uzu billahi min shaitan rajim. So even emotionally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us through Al-Quran how to handle emotions. Because with that, then you, you take care of um, cortisol, adrenaline, and with that you actually help save the body. I hope you understand me. That is the length that Islam has gone to tell us how to, you know, live our daily life so that we be healthy spiritually and physiologically. And so if you had it at the back of mind, you know, okay, uh, let me just do this and abuse the body, then I will use fasting to cancel it. I think we should take the win-win situation. Now. Now. Um, Alaikum Last question. Science told us that uh, meat is protein. Yes. And um, body does not protein. Yes. It takes only the quantity of it requires at a time. Take mm. it You're right. And the, the rest go out of weight. Yes. So how do you see now? Because if body can check itself mm. by taking only the, the, the protein that it requires mm. and then take out the rest of weight, then what is about why is No, um, I didn't say don't take meat. I said Aisha Rajallahu and has said, please, I want everybody, because I don't, I don't want to leave here and, you know, uh, when this goes on, um, you know, social media, then people will be looking, wanted. What is that man? Let's go for after him. I didn't say it. Aisha Rajallahu and her deed. The idea of staying for three months without meat means meat is not the only protein. Very good. In fact, some scientists argue that meat, the protein that um, you, know, you derive from meat and that which you derive from, um, let's, say, let's say, from beans, plant beans, that this is better. Why? Because while this will actually also, you know, drain you in some way, plant-based protein don't. But this is a place, um, you know, we're not, we're not vegetarians as Muslims. So we're not saying that, you know, just get rid of it. But even if you come through Al-Quran, the mention of meat as food is very, very limited. It is always what? Fruits, 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 vegetables. That's what it is. And so cutting it will won't do anything. You source it from, from plants. I, 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 please, I hope you understand me. It's not that if you don't eat meat for one week, which means you don't have protein, then you're dying. No, I'm not dying. What I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is that the, the any protein you take, yes. the body just take what it requires. Yes. So you, you take it from plants. You take it from plants. Yes. You, you know, when, when you do that, mashallah, you are on the path of, of, of sunnah. Let me use that. Maybe that will, you know, no. mashallah. So we take meat, but not too much meat. Because um, that is consistent with, 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 with the lifestyle of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it. I, I hope I didn't irritate anybody or make you angry. Jazakumullah khairan wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullah. We hope we will call you back, please. We will call you, please. We hope we will to work. I will accept our invitation. Inshallah. Thank you. I have a lot to learn from you. Ask for Allah. Yeah, that's why we make it easy. Yeah. We are all, we are, we are. Yeah. At the same time, Inshallah, we will be eating our meal in Pukka, in Vietnam. In Ghana, they call me Pukka, me Ajana. So, me and I will just put little meat there. I will enjoy it. Mashallah. I'm not a they are Ghanaian, they know about it. I don't know if it is in Ghana. But I found them, they said, me and I I was surprised when I first heard about it. It is it, um, it, 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 it's, it's a way of you know, encouraging us to eat. Because, you know, because of economical reasons. So, they created that <laughs> as a trick to get people to uh, the. And um, <coughs> inshallah, if, if anything, um, we, next time maybe we talk. If, if not, also, either we meet here or at the center, whichever way. If you have problems, inshallah, then uh, we will attend to that. Uh, lastly, I just want to call our attention. Dr. Recently opened his uh, clinic here in Cairo State. And in the Islamic way, they are attending to patients. And inshallah, now, um, Really, even suggesting that Muslim brothers are one Muslim, call it such kind of places within our communities. What we have the problem about taking our wives to certain kind of well, we all know the issues that we are facing, or sometimes we are going to different kind of medication that we even the those people that are giving us at the instance of scan, they don't even know much about it. We all know, and along when you enter Kadu, I said, down that roundabout, because the uh, third corner. But uh, this is equal A close. A close we see there, yeah, inshallah. What's the name of the clinic? The name of the Hakia Hakia Integrative Healthcare. Hakia Integrative Hakia. Healthcare. Hakia. It's actually H A K I A. So we put it together, Hakia. Hakia. Yeah. Yes, inshallah. <laughs> Sallu ala nabi al-kareem Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ala muhammad Kawa salli ta'ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim Inna kawidu majid Allahumma barik ala muhammad wa ala ala muhammad Kawa barak ta'ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim Inna kawidu majid Mula raga Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya saka wa malin da al-khairi Kuma Allah mat uka yinsirki ya kaara Masa fasaha Kama yadde zoya tiradda mulapia Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya maida chikidan salapia Muna kufatam kuma nanggaba idamu kani mechi za izu ya amsa kiramu Inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya ampa na amu kumada amida muka jika bada ya Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samil alim Watuba alina ya maulana inna kanta tawabu rahim Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun Wassalamun ala mulisalina walhamdulillah rabbil alamin